through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 149. I'm Spencer. I'm Craig. Today, in honor of Battleship, da, 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 we're going to be talking about alien invasions. In honor of... Uh, yeah, honor being a loose term in this case. Yeah, and in this case, hoping that we will get just enough notice that we can maybe punch Peter Berg in the balls. That would be an interesting press move. I would I'd be curious <laughs> about that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's all it. I don't know. But we're talking about alien yeah, invasions at a point. There's a lot of different ways that this can happen. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's subtle. They mm-hmm. try and come in and, you know catch us while we're not mm-hmm. looking sometimes they're just trying to ram it down our throat yep. and just wipe us out mm-hmm. and i kind of like that diversity yeah for the first one though we're going to be talking about the more subtle one where mm-hmm. they kind of trick us and get us out without noting mm-hmm. it and that was invasion of the body snatchers the original the original yes. from 1956 directed Classic. by don siegel which is crazy because he has done all sorts of stuff mm-hmm. dirty harry which we've talked about mm-hmm. numerous times he's all sorts of up and in yeah uh clint eastwood's game with yeah coogan's bluff escape from alcatraz mm-hmm. but he also did the original invasion of the body yeah. snatchers in the invasion of the body snatchers essentially the aliens are Capturing everyone. Yes. Like, I don't know what, just hiding them. Yeah, they're. I, and then growing I, duplicates of them that yeah, are aliens. Yeah, cloning, making alien clones. This Did, is also interesting because this is what, 56? Yep. So this is a Red Scare allegory. Oh, totally, yeah. Totally. Which is, which is, well, I mean, perfect allegory. Yeah, all about communism sneaking in and replacing people and they act like they're the same but they're slightly different and they're really working for I'm somebody else. I'm trying to else. remember. Do you remember if they actually kill the people or are they just like. I don't know if you ever fully Understand. see them. I think they are they just disappear and you see the pod replacements, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's what I recall. I forget. It's been, it's been about four That would be years, a much darker film if it. they did that. I, mean, I don't think it was ever fully... No, 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 I think they do kill him. Because there's that mem- I remember in that scene in the greenhouse mm. where he finds I, I believe it's like he finds a body and he finds the dead person. That, I thought that was where they're growing them or something like that. I don't remember. Dang it. We suck. Yeah, we suck, but maybe they can let us know. Yeah. Either way, it's really interesting how it's like the aliens are kind of are using our own shape well, against and, each other. I mean, this is definitely yeah, exactly. Not only they use our own shape, but this is something that's become like a, a, a popular concept. Mm-hmm. You know, like the Stepford Wipes, yes. where you're basically replacing someone, and in all visible ways that are the same yes. but they're not the same yeah, any and kind of brainwashing mind control trope has kind of come out of this and in some ways that's scarier than yeah um if it's not visually an, obvious an alien that's shooting at you yeah. because you know that is trying to kill you yeah and you but, can shoot back <laughs> but at the same time if somebody's is an alien or isn't you don't know yeah i mean they might act differently yeah, but, but you don't know i mean exactly it's sort of like Mistake. And I think it's in Invasion of the Body Snatchers, it's whenever you, it's, they can only get you when you go to sleep. Mm. And so, like, that's Stay the awake. whole thing. It's like to, that when people go to sleep, that's when they get switched over. So it's never even that they're grabbing people in the middle of the day mm. or, like, in public. It's at night once people are asleep and not being seen that they're just, the next day they wake up. See, if they're smart aliens, this is how they do it. I mean, I guess if they're strong enough, they could just wipe us out and they don't give a it really crap about... It really depends on what they want out of us, right? Well, if they're based upon the Transformers one, they want slaves. If it's based upon, you know, Independence Day, they just want our resources. Yeah. If it's based upon this, I guess they want us. Mm-hmm. What do you think the aliens want? Let us know at MacGuffinPodcast.com. <laughs> uh, next one was one that you had raised from many years later. Yes. That in some ways is probably the best titled one, <laughs> and that is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. With and clowns, K's. yeah. K clowns, yes. not C clowns. I'm, you know, Spencer. I think ever since I started on the MacGuffin podcast, I have longed to discuss, longed this. to for the moment that I would have a good reason to be able to talk about the amazingness of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Now your opportunity is here. What do you have to say about it? It is a. <laughs> it, it's exactly what you would think it is. It's alien clowns that have a full tent and everything that's their spaceship that's awesome they shoot they uh cocoon people in cotton candy 
and they, which then deteriorates them and they eat them. Awesome. I mean, they've got popcorn guns, evil alien puppets. I think that it's might be the just... scariest aliens imaginable, honestly. <laughs> it's clowns. Like, yeah, like, you think about between this and it, that's probably where all that, like, <laughs> hatred of clowns really began, is, like, creepy clowns killing people. It's got a, a midget clown, put, uppercuts a guy's head off. Well, Greg. But as far as alien invasion goes... I have some good news for you, if this is the case. The director of this, Stephen Chiato... Uh-huh. Hasn't really directed a lot of yeah. other stuff. He did, he's done a lot of art stuff. He was like a puppet supervisor mm. on Team America World Police, etc. Mm, interesting. So he's done a lot of interesting stuff. He hasn't directed a lot of other stuff. But there is one other thing he is working on. In 2013, you have the return yes! of the Killer Clowns <laughs> yes! from Outer Space in 3D. That's amazing. I own this movie on DVD. I think it's probably like the fifth DVD I owned. Like, I've literally had it on DVD that You long. have something to look forward to. And it is just, it's so ridiculous. And as far as the alien invasion topic goes, they, this is in the 80s. So it's weird looking clowns and the invasion is that people would never assume yeah. that a clown is being serious in the first place let alone doing something nefarious so they do things like show up with pizza and then kill everyone in the house oh, I, totally, like, I totally think clowns are nefarious oh yeah we do now oh no totally. <laughs> Dude, i never trusted clowns they're too creepy too weird interestingly <laughs> enough this movie also in the very beginning has a small cameo before he was anything of uh, comedian Christopher Titus. Very nice. Randomly, when I watched it again, I was like, hey, I recognize Check that Check out guy. this film. Holding on. white cans of beer. White can says beer in black letter on it, which it's I think would be the best. the only type of beer I drink. Best kind of beer. <laughs> but, yeah. So, amazingly silly, ridiculous movie. Someone makes a shadow puppet of a Tyrannosaurus Rex and eats someone. I mean, I love with it. the shadow puppet. I love it. It's great. Interesting, though, the same year, same another year, really? alien film came out. They live. Another awesomely bad uh, alien. Movie. Another awesome, oh, just awesome one. I mean, it's got row, row, rowdy Roddy Piper as the star. How can you go wrong with that? It's crazy to think that this is by John Carpenter. I mean, that's, we so, that's why it's awesome. We that's why it's not bad. Bad. We, it's bad. Awesome. We could have easily talked about the thing uh -huh. or. The thing from outer space on which that is mm -hmm. based on, we actually did a roundtable about that, which mm -hmm. you can listen to our thoughts on if you're really so inclined. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we had to do something different, so this one came out. And this one, again, is sort of interesting in the same way Invasion of the Body Snatchers is, mm -hmm. where aliens are already here, but you don't know it. Yeah, and they're basically yuppie aliens. Yes. They just want to hang out in our consumerist society and... And they make us do things with subliminal messages mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And you only are able to recognize them with certain sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. And I forget how he even gets those sunglasses. Uh, he becomes aware of like this group underground of, movement that yeah, gets into him. I think. Yeah. Well, like he, he finds this underground movement, and then they like are destroyed by the police mm, or something. He mm -hmm. comes back and he finds them in the trash yeah. or something. <laughs> and it's just awesome. Like it, it has one of I believe our top five fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the that Rowdy was... Roddy Piper. Key David one. Yep, that was directly scene for scene parodied in South Park between Timmy and Jimmy. Yes. When they had the cripple fight. Yes. Was, Grab yeah, fight. was the straight up same, like yeah. back breaking and the hitting him with the fate in the face with the stick. Or but, board. Yeah. Also know, has one of the greatest lines in movie history. I'm here to kick ass, chew bubblegum and a mall out of bubblegum. Yeah. Ripped off by uh, Duke Nukem. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it's, fun it's funny to think about all the different things Duke Nukem. This one, Army of Darkness, like mm -hmm. I guess you know, if you can find good things, why not just steal them? Like, it's not a bad idea. Steal good ideas. Like, it's probably, well, it's probably not a people, great idea, but probably it's... how most people got successful in this world. Sadly, probably just. Yeah, but you know, it's it's one of those things that like this was really interesting. Again, sort of like uh, not exactly like a communist allegory, like no, um, yeah. But there's still that sort of like totalitarian allegory, mm -hmm. like a 1984 type thing where yeah. there's subliminal messages, messages like obey, consume, and the simple fact that like this is your god. Even when he's discovered, it's not like the aliens want to. It's not like he discovers some nefarious plan that the aliens are like going to kill everybody. It's that they're sub subliminally controlling us and essentially assimilating themselves into our culture. Yeah, and that's really the 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 fact that they're just like almost more like immigrants in that way. They're which would be fine if you knew about it, but the exactly. fact that you're being 
subconsciously manipulate it is what really makes it nefarious. But I always remember being really weirded out by the movie that it wasn't like it wasn't like some nefarious plan to eat people or steal things. It was just that they were there. That was literally like makes me curious about. Apparently, it's based on a short story called Eight O'clock in the Morning by Ray Nelson. Hmm. Be curious to check that out and see how that differs. But it's it's, I mean it's a fun film. I think it's a fun film. John Carpenter. Yeah, John Carpenter. Yeah. The crazy MIDI soundtrack that uh, he did it. Dude, dude, dude composes his own movies. Guy, guy knows how to do it. Mm-hmm. Give him, love him or hate him. Give him six keys on a keyboard, and he can come up with a soundtrack for your movie. Um, <coughs> if I were to tell you that there's another alien invasion, probably ooh, this could be the most influential one of my lifetime so mm. far, or at least the most memorable one uh, that made eight hundred million dollars. Good God! In 1996, would. Good God. Would that uh, pop to your mind? Well, yeah, because I can s- yes, see it. Yes, you can see it. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about Independence Day. Or ID4. ID4, if yes. you want to be hip, like uh, the posters were. Because <laughs> Independence yeah. Day is long. <laughs> yeah, it's a long one. This is sort of like when Roland Emmerich and Dean, <coughs> Dean Devlin sort of blew up in the scene. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, sort of became known for their disaster film. L- last good movie. Oh, I like a lot of rolling. I know that's why I said. I it. like a lot. I like a lot of rolling. That might have, that might have been Spencer. Hey, I am I'll, also, I'll admit that was a little bit of Spencer. I'm even a Dean Devlin fan. I like leverage, guilty mm-hmm. pleasure. I'll throw that at you right now. I haven't seen. It. But this is sort of when Will Smith became an action star. Mm-hmm. This is probably the most ridiculous um, answer to an alien invasion. <laughs> That a computer virus is able to stop an alien invasion. <laughs> that a that a human computer is able virus. to. But it's just not a human computer at all is able to interface with an alien computer. Listen, <laughs> it is a Mac. Macs are awesome. Do you have to say anything else? Should nowadays my iPad probably could do it. Yeah, that's right. And computer beep beep. Yeah, like, shit. Steve Jobs knows what's up. I think it's this all- was before Steve Jobs was actually back. So technically, mm. I can hate it still. But. It's also in the. Um, the 90s resurgence of Jeff Goldblum. Yes. In this and Jurassic Park. Yes, very Definitely much so. Blue. Bill Pullman. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. president of America. One of the one of the better presidential inspirational speeches. Oh, in, God, in yeah. The, the speech like, at the end of this movie is fantastic. I and believe, also one of the most ridiculous Randy Quaid characters. I believe this Friday or Thursday, I don't know when I'm going to be released, maybe the same day this episode comes out, we have a top five... Um, speeches oh, hey. coming out so is that going to be on there Stay i won't say but it deserves consideration mm-hmm. i say that yeah one of the more like i said one of the more ridiculous uh, randy quaid mo- uh, characters Interest, and moments. interesting it won a academy award for special effects because mm-hmm. that trailer i remember i mean the trailer destroys all the american landmarks yeah. that's that's why i say it might be one of or might be the most yeah uh white house memorable empire state building all that stuff yeah, yeah. like that's why it might be the most memorable alien invasion mm. in my mind. Yeah. Plus, I mean, Will Smith punching the alien. How's that? <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Yeah. So one effects, which is no <laughs> surprise, but it was also uh, nominated for a Razzie Award for worst written film, grossing over a hundred million dollars. <laughs> Seems like a very specific category. <laughs> Thank you, Razzies. <laughs> Surprisingly, did not win. <laughs> yeah. But, but still, I think it's a fun film. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's got it's a ridiculous. lot of weaknesses. Looking back on it, but it's also still very fun. And there are a lot of films I've tried. To like replicate this yeah, kind of thing, definitely, and have not even come close yeah, to like, being as good like as Battle Los Angeles. Yeah, there are a lot Battle of Battle Colon Los Angeles. Yeah, there are a lot of ones that have tried, yeah, just haven't been able to do that same sort of thing. You know? I think part of what was successful for this movie was, even though it was pretty much just about Will Smith, it was the semi like multi story arc. You had like him, and you had Vivica Fox with the president. Or with the president's wife, I believe, or, and you know, you had these various elements. Jeff Goldblum leading up to it. You had the president himself, Randy Quaid. You, had kind of, you it kind of was more of a, a tried to be a bit more of a national view or a widespread view than just a single well, character. I, I also think that you know the thing that was most resonating with this is this was like, I mean, I don't, I mean, somebody could write in and tell me if there's another one that's as clear, but this was like the first time that. We really were able to sort of give perspective of what aliens theoretically could do yeah. if they want it. Like yeah. they just like came they in, start winning. Like they well, not only that, winning. but they just like they come in, they blow everything yeah. up. Like I don't know if there have been a movie it's true. about alien yeah. invasion where it's like usually you know it's like a small alien invasion yeah. in one town. This well, one they come like everywhere yeah. and simultaneously destroy everything. Like, yeah, like wipe and, out the Eiffel and Tower. The, and, yeah, the scale of like the destruction is like 
a huge mm -hmm. jump from anything we had heard from it. Yeah. It was like, oh my god. Like, you know, we could fight back in our town, but if they come here and destroy everything simultaneously, yeah. and, what would we do? Like, how would we get organized? And, and, and how, who didn't go, oh, when yeah. that ship flew out of the huge cloud bank the first time. Oh, yeah, Really totally. gigantic. The effects are good. Not hiding straight up in our atmosphere spaceships. Like that's... Yeah, the effects for the time were yeah. fantastic. Oh, yeah. So. I think they're still probably not yeah, that bad. Probably not that bad. Other than the Welcome yeah. to Earth. <laughs> well, that's not effects. That's just sad writing. Pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, cigar in mouth is what it is. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Next up is probably one of the most notable ones mm. in terms of, like, the origin of it, and that mm -hmm. is the X-Files movie. Yes. The which is based Fight upon... the Future, right? It's the first one? Yes. Okay. Or is uh, Fight the Future the second one? It might be the second one. Okay. Anyway, anyway I think it's just X-Files for this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, one of the better soundtracks of a 90s yes, movie, Yes, great, too. great soundtrack. But this was the one based upon the TV series mm -hmm. that was immensely successful. Mm -hmm. Granted, the series wasn't necessarily about aliens, yeah. per se. I mean, that's one topic that reoccurred yeah. during it, but it's about sort of, like, unknown phenomena, yeah. really. Yeah. And this... And a believer and a skeptic. Yes. This was um, the story of, like, you know, Mulder and Scully discovering an alien virus... Mm -hmm. And trying to figure out what exactly that's all about. Yes. Ultimately, it you know, Scully gets the virus. Uh, they that's have right. to go to Antarctica mm -hmm. to, um, to find the find cure. This cure. Yes, that's right. The, ultimately, they discover like a spaceship down there. It's yes, all sorts right. of crazy stuff, you know. And it's it's funny to me that. This was directed by Rob Bowman, oh, okay. um, which that in and of itself is not funny. But the guy also has directed Airborne, which is that awesome skateboarding Oof. movie or uh, rollerblading movie. Okay. If you remember, with Seth Green oh, when God. he was a kid, <laughs> awesome! I love it, love it. So this is such a dramatic change from that. Plus, he did Reign of Fire, the dragon movie, uh, and Elektra, the comic movie. So the dude is like all weird. over the map, yeah. like which yeah. I appreciate. Yeah. Um, I will say, I was not a huge X-Files fan. Like, I mm. watched an occasional episode and I enjoy it. I loved Unsolved Mysteries, so mm. you would think I would love the X-Files, but for whatever reason, I never really got into watching it. I was I was way too much of a wuss. It scared the crap really? out of me as a kid. Oh my god, so much. Especially, it didn't help that I didn't watch for a number of years, and then when I decided to watch an episode again, it was like an episode that had been written by Stephen King, mm. and it this like creepy doll, and I was like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> It was creepy. The, th here, just <laughs> the thing that I loved about it was that it was like Unsolved Mysteries, mm. but you add in the fact that like there's a conspiracy going on, and it's sort of like my worst friggin' mm -hmm. possible nightmare. Yeah. Like I would listen to like Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell <laughs> and stuff right, like yes. that. And sort of like imagine if one percent is true. And it's like there's somebody behind this trying to keep all this stuff yeah. from being known. It's sort of like oh my god. Yeah, and the idea that like even though you know there's higher institutions than the FBI, the idea that someone working for the FBI would not only not be able to solve these mysteries, but would be meet resistance within their own government is kind of uh, scary. Yeah. To think, yeah, but this is an interesting also for the alien invasion because it was never, it was never like a, a obvious. It was a very subtle. The, the right. alien invasion aspect of right. it was a and subtle. And it wasn't so much that they were fighting the aliens yeah. during it. It yeah. was that they're fighting our like own government. Yeah, we're sort of helping it along. Yeah, by, whatever you know, the secret is of the alien, that was the mystery that both sides were working on. Well, and it was sort of like, what exactly is happening with yeah. these aliens? I mean, the aliens are here, these people are helping the aliens mm -hmm. in their invasion, but it's sort of like, we were, they were, I mean, the humans were the ones sort of getting this alien virus being ready to spread, mm -hmm. whereas the aliens themselves were in the ship in Antarctica, mm -hmm. like, in there was it, they were, um... Uh, they were dormant, mm. lying dormant in their vessel beneath the snow. Mm -hmm. So you know, it was, it was not like they were the ones killing us, but you know, it was, it was coming. Yeah, it was coming. Yeah. One of the most disappointing ones to oh, me. Oh my God, so disappointing. In a sad, sad way, was oh. War of the Worlds. Oh. Uh, we're talking about the Steven Spielberg version, not the original oh. uh, one from 1953 by. Mm. Byron Haskin, who directed mm. that, or even the radio version mm -hmm. from Orson Welles yeah. before that. This is. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it, this is sort of like a combination of them where the aliens have already been here. Yeah. They hear, and then suddenly something just sets them off. Yeah. And they the just start is... wiping everyone out. Mm -hmm. This is probably, I mean, definitely in that vein of Independence Day sort mm -hmm. of alien yeah. invasions. Where, uh, the, where it's like humanity striking back. Yeah. 
it's where it's like they're so just prolifically mm-hmm. destructive um and at the same time it's also a personal story because you're following this one yeah. family like they don't know what's going on mm-hmm. elsewhere they don't know on everything that's going on um, I, I know it was written in the original but I'm, I'm still bothered by what actually caused the aliens to to be what their weakness was oh, i'll say people the trouble it sucks they get a virus and die like it's water yeah Nah, is it? Is, yeah, it's it the water. Or is it just like it's 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 like oh, air. it's the common cold or something yeah. like it's, that. It's, it's so, like it's literally something like retardedly simple. Yeah, like, so pervasive that you're like, how would you ever even start yeah. the takeover? No, I think water was the aliens and signs. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. So yeah, it's like a common cold. Yeah, and it's just like, how could they not have prepared for this? They're smart enough to create these giant tripods that can That's, vaporize anyone. And, and hang dormant on Earth for years, but they aren't enough to wear gas masks or in, and see, indoctrinate themselves. I, I loved... Uh, <laughs> I was a huge fan of pretty much everything until about 75% in. And A, they, they die at the end, but B, when the sun basically is proven to be alive. The sun leaves, it's sort of like, oh, well, he's mm-hmm. probably going to die, that sucks. And then he's like, hey, I'm fine in Boston, which seems to be unaffected by the alien invasion. And, you know, then the aliens just die, and Morgan Freeman narrates it. Mm-hmm. And I'm sort of like, save yourself the trouble. Don't watch this film. It's yeah. not good. Yeah, like, I saw this in the theater. I did too. Oh. I was I I really I was like it. Spielberg aliens. I th- I think How can that not be awesome? The alien invasion stuff is awesome. The alien stuff, he the effects and stuff are phenomenal. Like yeah. you know the the scene on the boat where they're attacking the boat and it's the like, whole the element uh, the dramatic element with Tim Robbins' character. I thought yeah, was I mean, actually it's, really interesting. It's, and, it's great, but it's just sort of like the end leaves such a bad taste in my mouth. That's like I, I've never brought myself around. Yeah, to watch because it again. it's it's one of those things where it's not just that they brought up a lot of things that they didn't wrap up in the ending. It's that they brought up a lot of things and then it's like halfway through the third act they just decided to end it. Like they didn't even give it a full resolute ending. They were just like and things happen and things happen and then family dies and it's over. Ha! There you go. That's what it is. Wee. Like, it's like family doesn't die and then it's over oh, yes um they but die. it's like everything everyone who hated the end of lost hated yes. but multiplied by like a thousand yes it's sort of like you know um they're on an island and we're gonna tell you the answer to it but then they just all go home and that's the end of the story yeah and it's sort of like wait what <laughs> what is this island what have they been doing all this yeah. time aren't you gonna tell us how this island yeah it's why like, would you invest all the time oh, never mind it's like nah they just got home it's yep. good yeah. Everybody worked out. They went back, and then they went to home. Just figured, like, yeah. home was the better place to be. Yeah. Jack shaved his beard yeah. off. Problem solved. But, you know, it got all the awards, or it was nominated for all the awards for, like, visual effects. Uh, and yeah. Sound editing, as great action films usually are. Yeah. yeah. Um, action was good. Just wish the ending was as well. Yeah. Maybe I should go back and, like, re-dub over Morgan Freeman and be like, and the hand the world ended because the aliens <laughs> killed everyone. Which would be a better ending. I would believe yeah, that one seriously. more. Seriously. One that deserves mention that we've talked about many times. And we cannot not recently, talk though. about enough now that I've seen it. So yes. I think all the times you talked about before I hadn't seen it. Now oh, now you understand. So now now you're there. like, I understand. And that is Attack the Block yes. from last year. The small sort of indie alien type film. And this is the alien invasion that a- aspect that I really enjoyed because it is very, very centralized. Mm-hmm. You don't get any indication that it's happening outside of the area that which it's happening. Which is London. Yeah, which is inside, in the ghetto of London. Not You don't even necessarily get the full idea that all of London is affected, mm-hmm. as much as in this one specific area of London. And just the idea that an alien invasion would not necessarily be a global or planned or intelligent. I also like that the aliens don't necessarily have guns. Like, yeah. We always like have movies with aliens with guns yeah. and stuff like that. Why do we always assume aliens have some sort of gun? Why can't they yeah. just be some sort of creature that like kills us? Exactly. And in this case, you know, without spoiling anything in case you haven't seen it, that it's not about intelligent aliens as no. much as it is just about <laughs> using it in a, another word, alien aliens. They're just different. They're creatures that are not from this planet and don't follow the science that we understand. And it's it's the action is really good oh, in the movie. Man. It's also a really funny film because yes. you have a group of kids basically yeah. as the only ones who are able to fight back yeah. against this wave like of aliens. Teenage hoodlums. Yeah, hoodlums no less. Yeah, not good kids, teenage yeah. hoodlums. The first scene in the movie is them robbing, mugging a woman. Yes, which <laughs> is a very important scene because it comes back into play mm-hmm. later. And it's just like everyone is so funny, so great, so talented. Great sound effects, yep. really interesting visual effects. The well, visual effects on the aliens are so clever. So, so clever. 
And for like a film that was like only, I believe, $13 million or so, it feels like much, oh, much yeah. more expensive film. Oh, yeah. You get so much bang for your buck. And Joe Cornish, the guy who directed, is, I believe, friends with Edgar Wright. So they mm -hmm. worked on Tintin together. Yeah, and he wrote, he wrote this also, didn't he, Joe Cornish? He wrote and directed okay, it. Okay, yeah. And he's writing the screenplay for Ant-Man. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. That Edgar but, Wright might be directing. Yeah, according to the yeah. internet rumor yeah, mill. you might be. According to Tweet Twitter. <laughs> but, you know, this is like, you have great little cameos by like Nick Frost mm -hmm. and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a fun film that if you haven't checked out, you absolutely should yeah. check out. It's worth your time. It, it, I put a challenge out there to any of you who are skeptical of it. If you can make it 15 minutes into this movie and you're not interested, then there's no way you'll like it. But if you... I'd, I don't like to, I'd like to hear from the people who didn't like it, and if you could tell me why you didn't like it. Exactly, I yeah. don't. I just I don't know what yeah, about it, unless you'll like I, I had it like on DVR action. or something a couple weeks ago, and, mm -hmm. and I put it on for a friend who wasn't even looking to watch a movie. I was like, why don't we put this on? He's like, meh, okay. Like, he wasn't... And by the end of it, he was like, that's so awesome. That was a great movie. It was great. And he was using the slang and telling people about it. I was like, yeah, that's what happened to me, too. Yeah. I heard you guys talk about it so much that uh, I was like, it's obviously going to be great. And I saw it, and I was like, well... Why didn't I see this six months ago? Uh, it's because I'm a genius. You're a tastemaker, Spencer. Yeah, that's what I should... Spencer, the tastemaker. That'll be on my business card now. <laughs> Just change your last name to the tastemaker. The tastemaker. Yeah. I think I'll do that. <laughs> you mean the phone book under yeah. the tastemaker, yeah. comma, Spencer? Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, I guess that brings us to this Friday, the 18th. Battleship is coming out. The two hundred million dollar Peter Berg production inspired Hasbro nightmare, inspired by the Hasbro board game, one um, of many to come. According, yeah, to Hasbro made a lot of deals. They have a, a Candyland, Lord of the Rings esque story coming. There's a Ouija of a Ouija yeah, board a movie Ouija. that's being worked on. For people junk about joke about hungry, hungry hippos. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Monopoly probably is. Oh, uh, I mean, Connect hey. Four will probably be some a boxing movie or some stupid. Yeah, you know the idea. thing about the, that kills Ugh. me is that this like I mean there are battleships in the movie, but, but as far as I it. can tell, nothing else. I, I mean I don't know what and, else you would base it upon. But yeah, like, and that and the um, the projectiles that the aliens use are uh, yellow yeah. pegs that yeah. stick onto the ship That's and right. then blow up. Yeah, it's sad. Can you tell how excited we are for this movie? I mean, yeah. As you said, like, if Liam Neeson doesn't at least say, you've sunk my battleship in this movie, yeah. everyone's going to forget. It looks just like Transformers to me. Yeah. Like, it looks exactly like a Transformers movie in the yeah. action. And, you know, I believe, did Hasbro own them as well? Yes, yes. So, like, it makes, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. At least Transformers... G.I. Joe. At least Transformers... G.I. Joe movie. At least Transformers and G.I. Joe have some story to work with mm -hmm. this is just completely just like do whatever you want i don't care yeah. and yeah i just it, it looks terrible to me it, I, it looks awful and they're really trying to upsell it for some and peter berg reason. peter berg is one of those guys who's amazing me that he's able to direct 200 million dollar <laughs> films because he seems to have so little positive <laughs> favor yeah. in it like hancock most people hated yeah uh I guess Friday Night Lights was okay. I mean, but most of yeah, the stuff... Yeah, he some credit for that. Most people, he just don't like the yeah. dude. And it's amazing that Hollywood gives him a $200 million film yeah, to even make. even though Very Bad Things is a guilty pleasure of mine, uh, there's no reason that after watching that, you should give that guy a $200 million action movie. Like, <laughs> just... And I, and I like it. But I like it as a guilty pleasure, where I like it in, a, in the sense that it's bad. Like, I don't actually think, like, oh, man, no... Very believable, well-written piece of art. No, no, no. Well, if you're looking for beautiful people, there's a lot of them in it. <laughs> Taylor right. Kitsch, yeah. Alexander Skarsgård, Rihanna, Rihanna with Brooklyn her acting Decker. debut. Yeah, like if if that's a selling point, this might be the movie for you. Otherwise. I don't know what to tell you. It'll probably try to give her some reason to be scantily clad and wet. They'll find a way to fit that in the movie. All right, I've sold a ticket. <laughs> All right, there we go. It's going to be the Underworld thing. It's going to be Rihanna in a bikini. It's going to be the Kate Beckinsale and leather Brooklyn pants. Brooklyn Decker, too. Mm, so you got a, you got some good stuff going for you there. Yeah. Um, sadly, I'm not enthusiastic about it. No. But let us know your thoughts at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Um, join us next episode, number 150. Woo! I like round numbers um, for our DVD rundown for the week of May 22nd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, let us know your feedback at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323.
761-9842. Yeah, that's good. Uh, We're on iTunes. We're on Blip, Roku, Miro. Check in at Get Glue Mm -hmm. and give us reviews. We really appreciate those of you who have done it. We're going to reward you. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't done it yet, you still could get rewarded for it. Yep. And if you have another place we should be that we're not, tell us. Because I'm sure Spencer has nothing better to do with all his time than upload every episode to 14 different locations. It's true. It's true. (laughs) Give him another one. Let's make it an even fit. Help me uh, out. Even. Help me. Help me. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.